Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 82 of Generation GC. My name is Molly Huddleston, once again, and as always, I am your host, as well as the producer, creator, and editor of this podcast. Today, we're talking about Let Me Go from Good Charlotte, the band's self-titled album released in the year 2000, and my guest is Val Brown. Last time, we had a retrospective episode talking about Generation RX as a whole, going song by song. On our next episode, we'll be talking about a song from The Young and the Hopeless. Val Brown is from Baltimore, and she grew up listening to Good Charlotte back in the late 90s and early 2000s. She's seen them nearly 20 times, from high school auditoriums to stadiums to TRL, and she's got a lot of fun memories to share from the early days of GC. Val created a GC website back in 1999 on AOL Pages, and all that experience kind of led to her now full-time career of marketing and content creation. Val is a breast cancer survivor and a mom of two little boys, and she can't wait to take them to shows one day. I also want to say that I love having guests from all around the world and from all different backgrounds on Generation GC. If English isn't your first language, that's okay. As long as you're comfortable holding a conversation in English, you're good to go. And different backgrounds doesn't just mean location or ethnicity. It means ensuring a varied gender and sexuality representation, representing fans of different ages, and fans with their own unique life experiences. So please, if you're listening to the show and you're thinking you have something to say, reach out and we'll, we'll get you on as a guest. I also want to continue mentioning blacklivesmatters.card.co, antisemitism.card.co, and antiasianviolenceresources.card.co. You know, the news is constantly changing and these subjects are not in some ways receiving the same focus in the news and the media as they were, you know, a year ago, year and a half ago. But it's so important to continue educating ourselves and to continue fighting against racism and hatred. Finally, Generation GC stickers are here. If you do want a sticker, there's two things you can do. Number one, support the show on Anchor. Go to anchor.fm slash generation GC pod and click support. All that money goes right back into making the show the best that it can be. It helps me print and ship the stickers and also helps me buy equipment and supplies that I need to keep the show running. Number two, you can donate to the Young Survival Coalition. Go to youngsurvival.org. Val herself is a young breast cancer survivor, and she'll talk about it a lot uh, on the show. She has some really powerful stories to share. And the Young Survival Coalition is a great resource for young adults who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. There's a lot of misconception that it doesn't happen if you're, you know, in your 30s or your 20s, but it, it can and it does. The Young Survival Coalition has resources for those who have been newly diagnosed. They have information on how to navigate life post-treatment and more. I would also like to encourage everyone listening to this show that if you are a person with breasts, to please do a breast self-exam regularly. I'm going to link an article in the show notes, but that's a great way to help detect any possible issues early. So, You're going to support the show on Anchor or donate to Young Survival Coalition, and then you're going to send me a screenshot of your support of the show or your donation, as well as your mailing address, and I will send you stickers. Pretty cool, huh? Well, that's about it for our show. Thank you for tuning in, and now on to episode 82. So, Let Me Go It's either track 11 or 12 on Good Charlotte's self-titled album. Um... Track 11, if you had the original version, which is what's on Spotify right now. Track 12, if you had the newer version with the click. Uh, The prior track is Walk By, and then it's followed by Screamer. And I always, I mean, I don't know. We definitely talked about this in the episode on the click. But it always was weird to me, like, why is the click on Spotify? That It's not? No, it's not. It's the, like, original version that doesn't have the click. Um, that's probably the original the version I had. I was at Record and Tape Traders on September twenty six, two thousand, buying this album, and I'm fairly certain Newfound Glory's self titled album came out the same day. So a big day, big day in my pop punk life back when I was about sixteen. Big day! Wow. Uh, so yeah, so Let Me Go was not a single. It has been played live, but it. Per setlist.fm, it looks like it hasn't been played live since 2001. 
Uh, they played it on Warp Tour at a high school, a mall in Ohio, and they played it in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, but it looks like it hasn't been played live in 2001. Uh, wow. Yeah. So I, that's not surprising. It wasn't like a big track. So I'm kind of like, okay, like I get it. Um, well, I will say it was a big track when they first started. Really? So they played more, that song. The set list FM or whatever is not very, there's not a ton of information in the early 2000s. No, no there definitely um, is not. But it, so I've got some cassette demos here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and it's, it was definitely one of their first songs that they did. I want to say that they often opened with it. Oh, um, okay. I don't this know. I don't have any proof of that, but it's a great opener. I don't know if that's why I'm saying it because I think it would be a great one, but they played it a lot at a lot of their local shows and in the beginning. Yeah. So 99, 2000, 2001, right, right, that okay. makes sense. Um, but I feel like back then that was, they played it at pretty much every show. Wow. Okay. But I guess it just got kind of dropped off the set list. Like, I don't know, by the time the first, not, not even by the time the first record came out, but I don't know. Well, there's also um, a previous version that says Alexandria, not Washington, D.C. And so that's the version that I know. So oh. down the streets of Alexandria, then they changed it for the album Outside when it came out. Outside of Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. kind of, well, A, Alexandria, I guess not everyone knows right. where that is. Versus if you say outside of Washington, D.C., that's like everyone. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's why they changed it. Um, and I'm sure that I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the label was like, okay, like we like this song, but like you got to say outside of Washington, D.C., like you got to change this, make it like a little more. Yeah, and they did that on the, the when they had the album come out. They changed yeah. a few things here and there. Yeah. Any other changes that you can recall for this song? I don't think so. I think that was the main one. I know that was like, you know, they played down in the streets outside of Alexandria. Um, and then when you, once the album came out, it switched and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still saying Alexandria. I'm not used to this. Um, but they never, but it makes sense. That, that's why they changed it. Did they live in Alexandria at some point or was it just maybe they the may, subject of this song was from Alexandria or something? I want to say they might have. I know they spent a lot of time in Annapolis. So it's like they yeah. started in St. Mary's County where, or Waldorf, Charles County, where they're yeah. from. They kind of went up to the Annapolis, D.C. area. Yeah. And then uh, they I, were never huge in Baltimore. So I grew up right. in Baltimore. If I went to see them, it was going down to Annapolis or, um, or D.C. Or or DC. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I I got the I get got the impression from like early interviews I'd read that they kind of move around a bunch. Uh, but yeah, it maybe just the subject of this song was from Alexandria or maybe there was a show in Alexandria and yeah. And it's really close to, you know, right outside of DC right. in between right. kind of DC and where they grew up. So it would make sense. That they would spend a lot of time there. Their brother right. could have been living there. They had an older brother. So right. There's also That's an older sister, sister. So I'm not yep. sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was like all, everybody in that scene was from like that, um, Northern Virginia, DC area, like Southern right. Annapolis. Right. Okay. Uh, well, just one more bit of info on this song. It was written by Benji and Joel Madden with additional lyrics by Josh Ian, who also wrote additional lyrics for Seasons. Ah, one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, Seasons is so great. Well, we have a lot to talk about with Let Me Go, but... Val, I want to help our guests get to know you. Mm -hmm. So the first question I like to ask is, when did you first hear Good Charlotte and what were your first thoughts on them? So I think I probably first heard about Good Charlotte because I used to hang out in a legendary radio station, WHFS's chat room. <laughs> so this was before social media. I think at the time, maybe there was Lipstick Party and Makeout Club, which was like, was like message MySpace. boards. I don't know what they were, but I remember like I would hang out on like those websites. I never had a profile, but I would like look at those websites or like the pop punk, punk blogs and heard about them because they did a lot of local shows with HFS. Yeah. And I think the first time I saw them was at an HFS festival. I'm fairly certain it was the spring of 2000 okay. and they did like an outside acoustic set. So I had to drag my friends there. They're like, who? Like, who are we going to see? Like, um, I'm trying to see fuel or incubus or whoever's playing <laughs> that year 
Um, and so I went over to a side stage to see them. And of course, yeah, first initial thing, I was a 15 year old girl. I was like, they're really cute. Um, and great harmonies. Like I just, when they would sing together, that was, you know, really something. So the twin thing obviously had an attraction. So I remember thinking, hearing about them then. And then before their album came out, someone in the HFS chat room sent me these awesome cassette oh, tapes. Wow. <laughs> Which we could go through what songs are on here. There's some gems. Oh, we should. Um, and that's where I started to listen to them. So th at this time, too, Napster is starting. So, you know, you're downloading music. And then I, the first time I really saw them, it was just the, them. Um, and wasn't like a big festival. Was in August of 2000, my mother drove me and my friends for my birthday to Philly, to the TLA. To see them open for Eve Six, which is actually pretty funny now. Um, yeah. And that was, and I remember <laughs> the funny story too was we met the guys from O Town. Um, if you remember them, they're on a show called Making the Band on MTV. Yes, yes. They were like outside of the TLA. They must have had a show, and we have this hysterical picture with them. And so my mom still talks about it. She's like, Do you remember when you met those That's band, so boy band boys before the Charlotte show? Um, so that was the first time that I saw like, one of their shows and then it I for a couple years went to not only every show in like Baltimore but DC as well so I've probably seen them 20 times that's awesome um well I have a lot of questions for you Val but like the most pressing one right now is I want to hear the some of these songs on these cassettes oh yes yeah. okay so I've got one from 1996 uh Gr Gravity Girls yes! Streamer <laughs> hey dad just in case can't go on just in case i don't know that one well i don't have a cassette player anymore but i can't i can't remember what that one's like then i've got let's see i have can't tell you who sent these to me either through snail mail remember i didn't realize days? screamer was so uh old. Screamer was really old. i knew it was, yeah. i knew it predated the first album but i didn't know it was back to 96 so here are some from demo tapes in 96 97 gravity girl again screamer hey dad which they did redo. They did Hey Dad later, right? Well, no, I mean, Emotionless was like a different song. Like, okay, like I'm it's thinking kind of about the same thing, but it's definitely like a different song. Cause I remember, I know Hey Dad. And okay. Emotionless I is definitely can't. a different song. Then but it's about okay. the same thing. Yeah, just in case again, can't go on. I heard you. Aaron's Licorice Nightmare. Yes. Yep. Wow. The love complicated East Coast anthem. Then they repeat some of these songs. Um, don't want to stop. Okay. So this is a bootleg CD, only 50 copies printed. Overcome, which yep. that turned into something else, I think. Um, Superman Can't Walk. Remember that one. Time After Time, which became Say, Say anything. anything. Yeah, we That's had an interesting and little discussion. Things. We had an interesting discussion of like, how did Time After, like, why, why was Time After Time saved for the second album? Um, uh, who know. knows I mean it was a great yeah. find on that second album I remember like oh, popping yeah. that. that's kind of where I started to drop off after the second album so I remember though popping that CD in and being like sure oh, shit. like I haven't heard this song in years yeah. um, and the production was elevated of course I think I cried it's possible yeah I think I also cried while hearing change on the first album oh, like I hearing bet. that like produced um well, Val, I heard that you back in the day had created a GC website. Oh, sure so did. I would love to hear about this. Like, tell oh me my, about this yeah. GC website. Um, well, there were a lot of GC fan sites back there. In the day. Not a lot. Maybe there were a couple. This was like or maybe 99, 2000. So my AAM name originally was GC Girly, um, <laughs> which is funny. Um, I did it on AOL pages. And okay. so my friends and I would refer to ourselves as the Powerpunk Girls because we were Cute. super cool. And I don't really, I would love to pull up this website. I would love to see it, but I can't find it in like the Wayback Machine. But I just kind of put in like pictures or tour dates, um, like information about us. And then eventually when Wakefield, which was Aaron's little brother's Aaron's, band yeah. started, um, we did some of the stuff, you know, like we tried to like have it a Wakefield Good Charlotte site. I don't think I did it for a really long time, but it was just like a hobby that I had back when I first got the internet in probably 98. Um, so yeah, we did that for a little bit. I think we like, I think our goal in life was like, let's get media passes to concerts so we yes. can get up front and take some pictures. And did you ever get that? <laughs> I did, but for another friend that had um, an online zine nice. um, and I did a few interviews with her with, um, 
gosh, who was it? Kenny's the lead singer, the starting line. Nice, nice. Homegrown. Um, I think I did some, I did take some photos at a movie life show. Maybe H2O. I think we might have interviewed them at one time. So I did that a little bit. And then at that point, I kind of like was getting a little bit older, got into college and just kind of sure, was doing other so stuff. To- it's time consuming. Any kind of it's, content development oh, is very time consuming. Oh, trust me. Trust me. I I very much know. Uh, I mean, the I switched the podcast from every week to every other week, you know, uh, for that reason. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, you now work in marketing. So do you feel I like do. your, your uh, fan, GC fan, like website days, do you feel like that kind of helped lead to your career? Yeah. So I think... No question that, you know, getting into that music scene when I was young led to the career I have now. So originally my goal was I'm going to go to call. I want to go to Drexel because they have a music industry degree. But then I was like, oh, you have to try out and play music. And I can't even read music, which is (laughs) something I've always kind of disliked about myself. Um, And then I decided that I would just go to college for communications. And I remember having a friend that's dad worked for Atlantic Records. And he was like, you don't need a music industry degree like my dad has no. a journalism degree and he's an executive and like my other his other co-workers like political science so I really loved that whole content development part of having a website and so I originally went into marketing advertising public relations and then originally uh, I started working in digital marketing so content creation and website development for mainly government websites but then that's pretty much led into everything I do now so I work in marketing I've been working in marketing for 15 years but Right now, I work for like a nationwide childcare company, cool. which is great because I have two little kids, so I'm I'm in that world. Um, but I love it. I love the psychology of like the consumer brain, you know, and trying to think oh, yeah. like what will resonate with them. Um, and so I do everything from like video production and script write. I've done a lot of script writing in, in my day, and being on like you know just like little education, like educational video sets, nothing big and huge, uh, photo shoots. Um, and then website and content development, and then just helping um, all of these nationwide like childcare centers market nice. schools. So it's pretty fun. Nice. Um, well, just a couple more questions, just to get a little more info about you and who you are before you go into the song. You know, you were coming up in Baltimore, so not too far from where GC is from. But like, when did you realize they were big and that they were not just like some local phenomenon? Gosh, I would say, I think we realized, I mean, I don't know if it was the first album, like they were still playing small shows, like the 930 Club is still pretty small and intimate. Okay. So I've seen them at a pizza place. I've seen them at a church. I actually was at that Arundel High School show. I did not go to that high school. And that's a whole nother story. That's a pretty (laughs) funny one. I didn't even go to the high school, but I was there. Um, And then I want to say when they were on TRL, we were like, oh, like, they're oh. they're famous, and I I was there, and I took a note. I was there, I think, when they premiered Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous on TRL. Oh wow! Like you were at yes, TRL. I was there for the video. Yeah, I was there for the video so debut. So cool. So cool. I was also there for Newfound Glory when they played My Friends Over You on TRL Live. So cool. Um, wearing that blue shirt I just showed you. Oh my god! <laughs> that says uh, Newfound Glory on it. So yeah, I have a great picture of that, like of that day. But yeah, I was there on TRL. I remember like talking at that time, there's AM, like talking to like Benji or Paul or somebody being like, we're trying to get a big group of people there. It never really happened, but like a bunch of my friends went there. And I'm pretty sure at one point there's probably a recording of me like saying like, you know, in, in TRL, they would have like video clips of fans that would like kind of come in during the video. Yeah. I think we did one of those, but I can't like find any archives of TRL mm. to find this. But my parents probably have recorded VHS somewhere. But yeah, that's when I was like seeing everyone kind of go crazy for them. They were on MTV Um, because sometimes their video was on MTV too, but it was like overnight. Um, right. And then I think when right. TRL well, prime another, time is a different thing. Yeah. And I think another thing when I thought they were really famous is, wow, Mandy Moore, teen pop star sensation. In their video. Is in their video. <laughs> like that's when I was like, wow, yeah. they're pretty famous. Um, And then when I saw, I think my like my high school friends, um, I went to an all girl high school. So, um, when people be like, who are these guys with pink hair and tattoos, like on your binder, you know? And then by senior year, they also had, you know, like they were going to good Charlotte shows, yeah. that were like a big arenas. And I was like, Oh, I think they're pretty famous now. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
That's so cool. It's very cool that you got to kind of watch them uh, grow and get big. Yeah. And I will say the great thing about them is they were so great to their fans. They always came out after every show. Like they knew my mom, you know, like she was at the, whenever wow. I could drive, she would drive us. But like before every show, they would come out and they were so accessible and meet everyone. They were always there to take pictures. They were just so kind. And mm-hmm. I like, I'm so glad that when you meet some people say, don't meet your heroes, but um, I never had a negative or bad experience with them wow. ever. So I, I'm like super, super thankful for that. Yeah. That's incredible. And I, I, you know, I have used that same sentiment in like a story I wrote about meeting the band uh, in the book I put out a few years ago. And I, I can assure you that, you know, at least what I've heard from everyone that's been on the podcast, that a lot of people share, share that feeling, share that sentiment. Yeah, I think they're great. Great guys. Yeah. Well, let's get into this song. So Val, we connected a while ago on Twitter and I'm so happy to have you on the show. Why did you want to talk about Let Me Go? Well, to be honest, a lot of your songs have already been chosen, (laughs) but so it kind of forced me to like go back in the archives and be like, what song like now really resonates most with me? And I think that that song does because I remember hearing it at a lot of their shows back then. But, and I think you and I might disagree on what this song means because I think it's kind of like singing, which is a great thing about music, right? So I think it's more about like singing to authority, right? Like, let me go have some fun. My decision sucks to you, but I'm so young. Um, so I didn't re I've never looked at it as like a couples thing. Yeah. I can see why you hang out late at night and fight just trying to have fun. But I I the, I definitely oh, sorry. saw this song as like kind of a breakup song. And I think primarily I take I have always taken this as like basically wanting to get rid of your ex, like wanting them to just let you go and just leave you alone after you broke it up with them. Like an ex that maybe you never really liked or that just got on your nerves or something. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, to, they wrote this song. I mean, if they're if back in 96. So I guess if I was, I was born in 84. So if I was like 12, I think they're like, they were probably like 17. I think yeah. they were like five or six years older than me. But I read it as like, you know, the line that really stands out to me was, um, we were such punk ass kids, but we knew everyone. Um, yes. And that is how those shows felt. So in the beginning, like, and I, there are still people that I am friends with, like on Facebook or I've connected, like still know from wow. meeting at those shows. So we had a group of maybe like six of us that would go to all these shows and then we built this community. And so you knew at any show, like I could show up alone and I would know a bunch of people there. Wow. Um, and that's what, you know, we were punk ass kids, but we knew everyone. And I think that's what really resonated most with me in that song, like that line. And of course the na na na, like how much fun is that to sing? Yeah. Um, especially live with all of your best friends. Oh Um, God. Yeah. There, I mean, I met a friend there that I, you know, we have lost touch because, you know, we're we're older now, but like we were really tough. We were close friends. She lived in Hawaii for a while. I visited her over there. Um, I swear she changed the trajectory of my life because her and I had gone to an All American Rejects concert at the 930 Club, which like, meh, they're okay, right? Like, and our car, her car gets broken into because I think where the 930 Club now is like pretty nice and has been like um, really fixed up around there. But back then it was a little scary. I'm surprised my mother let me go down there. Um, and I had to go to her house because they stole my purse out of her car with my car keys in it. So we went back to her house and I had to hang out there for a little while until my parents brought me keys. And oh she God. had an application on her kitchen table to work at in Ocean City, Maryland for the summer. And so I was like, that looks really fun. I should go work in Ocean City, Maryland for the summer. Um, and then my best friend, Stephanie, who I went to all the shows with, we decided to also work in Ocean City uh, for the summer at the same place. And then I married someone from Ocean City, Maryland. So I'm always oh my like, God. oh, you know, like it's kind of, I don't think I've ever would have had that idea to do that if I wasn't like stuck at her house at one in the morning waiting for my parents to come give me an extra set of keys to my car. Oh my God. So, I love um, that. Yeah. And like I had, I hung out with her in Hawaii. I think we like hung out in like California before because she lives, I think in Arizona now, but we stayed in touch for a real long time. And yeah, then life gets, you know, you work full yeah. time, you got kids, yeah. you get busy, but Um, there's a lot of us that are still connected, um, that all, and if anyone's going to a newfound glory show or anything nearby, we all talk like, is anybody going? So it's really cool that community that's, you know, I've known these people for 20 years now. 
Wow. So that's really special. That's special. And I, I so love that you have that connection and I can see why this song would have such a deep meaning to you. If nothing else for the fact that it was like, sounds like it was like a set opener and they played it all the time in those early years. So. Yeah, it was, it was fun to sing the na 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 live. I mean, what's better than like a, um, Madden brothers, although I also knew them as the Combs brothers, but, um, Harmony, right? <laughs> yeah. When did they, I think they changed their last name, not by the first album, but by the second album, I think they changed it. I think as soon as they started kind of getting famous, they took their mom's yeah. maiden name. Yeah. And I think they, I think their brother did too. They all did, which they all makes did, sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, one other line I want to shout out from this song is when they talk about blazed up bloodshot eyes. Um, Mr. Joel Madden, are you high? Did you smoke some marijuana? I mean, and I hope so. I mean, listen, good for them. listen, when I first heard this <laughs> CD, I was 12. So I bought oh. the Young and the Hopeless first. <laughs> and then a couple months later, I discovered they had another CD. So I bought this one and I was 12 and I was like painfully innocent. And like, I didn't know what that meant. I just thought that meant they were tired. Um, they could have also been tired. I mean, they worked really no, hard. No, but I think I think <laughs> I think blazed up bloodshot eyes means you're high. Like, yeah, let's just tell twelve year old Molly I mean, they were definitely tired yeah. to eat for sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't know the word blazed up. That you know, <laughs> yeah, bloodshot, yes, but th that could be tired. But blazed up, no, like they were, yeah. they were high. Um, yeah, I, I lost all that innocence at HF Festival in 1999 when I was 14 um, and my mom let me go. And uh, I think like the Cottonmouth Kings played and a few, I remember like they had transmissions tents and I think everything was out the window that day. My eyes yeah. got very wide. <laughs> I remember being in Philly with my family. It was like New Year's. I was probably 14 and again, very innocent. And we had just gone out to like a nice dinner uh, and we were staying at like a really nice hotel in the city. Um, and we just gone out to a nice dinner and we're walking back to the car and I'm like, what's that smell? And my dad's like, oh, that's marijuana. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you from those like. shows back then, I don't remember. I mean, I, I don't remember that it being a cloud of marijuana smoke. <laughs> yeah. I, <didn't laughs> I guess it that, depends on who they vibe, played with. But, um, but I don't ever recall that happening. But they were like 18 year old boys, you know, Come like, on. right. They lived in right. Southern Maryland. If you've ever been there, Molly, there's nothing to do. Um, oh, I, I went to cow tipping and maybe, yeah, blazing. <laughs> I, uh, I stopped by there on my way home. My boyfriend's family lives in Montgomery County. Um, and, you know, he was staying for a little bit and I was coming back to Philly and I was like, let me like detour and go to Waldorf. And there is nothing. Like there's more now. I mean, yeah. I think there's like, really there's like malls and stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean, even like the high school to like, you know, the, like they'll play to high school to like the, whatever, like mall in Waldorf was like 25 minutes or something like that high school. I think I saw a Wawa like two miles away, but like that was it. Oh yeah. There's not much going on there. And I actually, when I went to college, a lot of my, my roommate was from Chopticon, which is like another high school. I think that was more. I don't know if La Plata is St. Mary's or Charles County, but it was down there. Um, I want to say Aaron went to Chopticon, and I know his brother did. But they, um, I hung out with all these Chopticon kids, which is pretty funny. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I had a good Charlotte website when I was like, what? <laughs> and they burned on me a little bit for that. But um, they were a lot of, they were fun people. But I remember hearing stories. There's literally nothing to do. They yeah. would go cow tipping, I think. Wow. <laughs> Drink in a field with a bonfire. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, in terms of like production and arrangement for the song, I mean, we got to shout out the bass line. Mm -hmm. Opens up the that great bass line. Um, shout out Paul Thomas. I mean, that's just such a strong opener. And I feel like it just kind of continues and really gives the song a nice good start for the rhythm section, I think. Yeah. Also got the, the crowd riled up when you played that live. Oh my you know? God. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. What a way. Wow. God. Just like what a way to open a set. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's just my thought. I don't have any proof of that, but I feel like it was a set opener. I could see this time. as a set opener completely, completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like start with like the lights are low as they're starting the bass and then the lights come up and they're rocking out. I could totally see that. Yeah. Um, 
in terms of like backstory for this song, I really didn't find any. So I, I didn't really find any interviews, but you know, there's there's not a whole lot of uh, interviews about the first album in general online. And like, you know, the two reasons I come back to are number one, it was like 2000 and they're just like, was not as much press happening online. And number two, in the year 2000, Good Charlotte was not as much of a media hot item as they were a couple of years later. Yeah. And if they were, any articles were on these like small, like pop punk blogs that are probably not around anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I found, that's where I would read a lot of it. I found a couple that have been archived, but like, I remember even like 2002, 2003, when I was getting into them, like finding a lot of stuff on like fan websites that was like, oh, here's an interview that I like scanned in from mm -hmm. some magazine or like, here's an interview that like was on TV and I recorded it and then like typed out everything they said. Cause this was like before YouTube. Yeah. And if there was a printed publication, I think there was this something locally called music monthly and they were okay. on the cover of that. And I know that's at my parents' house somewhere. Uh, um, so they got a lot of local, I think like Annapolis, maybe DC press at the time, I'm, I'm um, sure, but nothing yeah. national. And honestly, the whole media landscape was so different back then. I mean, most God, yeah. people weren't even on the internet. It was, what exactly. a time it was. That's how I know I'm getting old. When I'm like, man, these are the good old days. Right. We didn't have cell phones and we didn't always have a camera on us and we just had fun. Yeah. Um, oh, Val, do you have any memories or other stories that you want to share about Let Me Go? Well, I saw that. Let me look through my notes. But I saw that um, they must have played it at Arundel High School, <laughs> which... I mentioned earlier, but I actually did not go to that high school. I went to a private school in Baltimore, nor did I really know anyone that went to that high school. But how that happened was... You heard Good um, Charlotte was playing there. <laughs> well, HFS was doing a can drive. I don't even know when this was. Was it 2001? It must have been around Thanksgiving. Yeah, early 2001. So HFS was doing a can drive. Whatever high school collected the most cans got to have Good Charlotte perform at your high school. Okay. So me and all of my friends were like, oh, we were like literally for days. We just took a wagon around. Um, I grew up in this town called Dundalk, um, which is like Southeast Baltimore County. Gets a bad rap, but is better than you think. It's only about 10 minutes from the city. So it was great location um, growing up and like getting into the live music scene. Um, so we drove, we walked around everywhere collecting cans. And most people in high school, did, you know, that high school didn't know uh, I didn't go to Dundalk High School either, I will say, but all my friends did. Right. Most people didn't, there didn't know who Good Charlotte was, so they weren't as motivated, but there was 20 of us who were really dedicated. And so we end up going to HFS to drop our cans off in the back of a big pickup truck. And um, there's another high school there. There's a Rundle High School. And I want to say the other one was like South River High School. Both high schools from the Annapolis area, more upscale area, that were really kind of, um, I want to say it was like South River was kind of like making fun of us for being from Dundalk. Okay. Um, scrappy Dundalk. And there is this kid, Danny. I still remember his name. He is also somewhere involved in the live music scene of the Annapolis, Baltimore area. I want to say he still is because I tried to look him up. And he's like, listen, if you give all of your cans to us, we will beat that other high school. We will win and we will give you 20 tickets to the show. And we're like, deal. So we just... Took all, we never even weighed in our cans. We gave them all to Arundel High School. Wow. They gave us 20 tickets and then a school bus left from Dundalk High School. I didn't even go there. I went to a private school. So I hopped on it and we were at Arundel High School. Um, oh my so God. I remember Joel wearing a super tight Arundel High School like gym uniform. Oh um, my God. And that was the best school day ever. <laughs> wow. So it's like so random that I was there. Um, and then I've, yeah, so th there, and I've seen them play in a really tiny pizza place called Paisano's, which is in Naples. It's probably not even there anymore. And they played on a stage that was probably as big as a bathroom. Um, and I remember that being, I don't know when that was. I've got, it's got to be 99. Um, but that was also like one, like one of those really fun shows that, you know, I think you knew at the time, like. Like, I have a picture of just me and all of Good Charlotte, like everybody in the band, Aww. right? At the time, you're like, this is never, you're never going to have access to this again. Yeah. Um, I think we knew at the time, like, I had, there's no question that I knew that they were going to be huge. Um, and 
I think we knew at the time that that was something really special and like this wasn't going to happen forever, even though wow. you wanted it to, right? You're like, you that they stay local forever and that they're just oh, ours yeah. forever. But um, I think we just, it was so fun to watch them grow and then yeah. hysterical that now they're married to like Hollywood royalty. So right. definitely didn't see that coming, but hey, good for yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. It was, it was it's a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of other good Charlotte songs that this kind of relates to, I mean, it, you know, they obviously have a lot of songs about like breakups and stuff, which, you know, again, that was my initial interpretation of the song. Um, not a lot that are necessarily like from the person who wants to break up with someone else, like maybe broken hearts parade, I guess. Um, but I mean, if if we're saying that this song is about rejecting authority, then you know, festival song, mm-hmm. the anthem. Um, that was more their vibe back then. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And especially if this is something that existed back in like '96, um, you know, when they're still in high school, and I, you know, did not really have a good time in high school. I mean, I could I could really see where that would come from. Yeah, I mean, those are the songs that really resonate with me the most because I was like, I guess like 15 to 18 when I was really into them was, or maybe right. 17, was just like festival song, um, Water Off Worldwide. Um, I do love Say, Say Anything too. Um, Motivation Proclamation. Sure. Those are like my favorites for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, our last little segment of the show, I want to, uh, well, first we'll talk about an alternate version and then we're going to go through some reviews and fan commentary. So there was an 8-bit computer game version of this song. Did you get to listen to that? I did not. No. What is that? What is an 8-bit computer game version? I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Honestly, like it, it's like a version of this song that sounds like computer game music, oh, like, like arcade music. Um, they did like a whole bunch. I'm like I'm trying to figure out. I think it was like an album, the Ultimate Good Charlotte album. So it's 33 songs, and it's like it's just like a bunch of different songs from the first three albums. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, it just sounds like a video game version of this song. There were definitely yeah. points where I was like listening to it and I'm like trying to sort of sing along the words. And then it like, I felt like it didn't quite match, but I don't know. Maybe it would be different if I like played this alongside the the actual version. Interesting creative choice for them. Maybe Billy yeah. was involved because I feel no, like I don't think don't seem I don't, like gamers. No, no, I don't think, I don't think they I, made it. They, they made it. Oh. They did not make it. Yeah. This was made by like someone else. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't really. I feel like since Spotify started, so I was like really into them for a couple. You know, I, I think after the second album, it's kind of where it dropped off for me, and I kind of sure. went into more of the brand new Taking Back Sunday. Like, always been a new Fan Glory fan. I've seen them like thirty five times live. Um, they will always be number one. But I kind of started to drop off there a little bit, so I haven't really deep dive like spotify for all of these old tracks like i've listened to a little bit of it um for sure i I listen to a lot of old pop punk and i feel like that's another topic we can talk about is like i have this theory that the pandemic and this feeling of nostalgia has brought about the resurgence of pop punk (laughs) totally although i think (laughs) it was in a lot of ways it was brewing beforehand that's true i guess it could have been but i'm not like you know i've got two little kids so i'm not like really into it but um when I listened to Machine Gun Kelly's album, I was like, oh, Pop Punk is back. Like, I am here for this. Yeah. Um, and he gets a bad rap, but I think he's really talented. He raps, oh, yeah. he acts. He's, he's great. Um, but um, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm excited to see. Like, Travis Barker is, like, really relevant again for yeah. multiple reasons, hugely, right? Hugely, yeah. Um, I think Will Smith's well, daughter. Well, engaged Willow, to a Kardashian. Right. I mean. Oh, yeah. What what more better way to get back yeah. into, like, the yeah, media exactly. conversation? Um, hey, good for him. But then I know like Will Smith's daughter is releasing a pop punk album and he's on it and Avril Lavigne. And I was like, wait a minute, what year is it? But then I was like, is it, are we all leaning towards this like old nostalgia of the early 2000s? Because we're, uh, yes, like things are cyclical, right? It's probably what's yes, coming back. Definitely. But then also is it like to 2020 and like kind of the darkness kind of lead us back into this uh, fun pop punk, you know, music. Time? Maybe. I hope so. I hope it's here to stay because my son's six, my oldest, and I, I he listens to less than Jake. 
he's listened to a little good Charlotte. Amazing. Our dog is our dog is Ruby, which he thinks Ruby Soho by Rancid is named after is a song that they made up yeah. for her, but she was I mean, named of after course. a Rancid song. Um, so I- I'm here for it. I'm like, I'm ready for like, I know Warped Tour is not around anymore, but I'm ready for the shows when we're Hell comfortable yeah. going. Yes. Again. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get into some reviews. So there were, there were a couple that mentioned this song. Um, Punk News gave the album a 4.5 out of 5. And they just said the five best songs on this disc are Little Things, Waldorf Worldwide, Let Me Go, I Don't Want to Stop, and Walk By. I'm never so. a big Little Things fan. Just throwing that out there. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it was overplayed and I just kind of got sick of that, it. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but that I feel like that was like the first track, I think, right? Yes. I think I skipped yes. over that all the time. Fair. Um, Cryptic Rock shouted this song out. They did like a 20-year retrospective last year. So they said, meanwhile, a smattering of straight-up rockers provide an injection that kept the collection from ever growing monotonous. Ooh, what a sentence. There were the upbeat sounds on I Don't Want to Stop, the fast-paced I Heard You, bopping Let Me Go, as well as this writer's personal favorite, Walk By. What a what is nice choice of words there. I mm-hmm. like that. Um, Rock Sound did a Hidden Gems of Good Charlotte article in 2018. And they said about this song, going right back to the beginning with this sunshine stained classic from 2000. That, yes, was, a, was, a fun one. that was a fun piece because they mentioned a lot of the songs that didn't get talked about a lot, you know, the, yeah, uh, the deeper the deep cuts. cuts. <laughs> um, Lil Dinosaur Luke on Rate Your Music gave the album three out of five and said, I gave it three out of five, but what's not to like? Some half-decent tunes like Let Me Go. Like their UK equivalents busted, they don't pretend to be anything they ain't. They're throwaway, lightweight popsters, and they know it. If you just listen to the songs, you might like them. I was going to say, like, why did you give it three out of five if you're also saying what's not to like? But they also said they're throwaway lightweight popsters, which sounds like you just yeah, don't I mean, they're think they're not winning Grammys for this. No, but no. Have they won a Grammy? Did no. They have any? I don't think so. No, yeah. and I remember there was some, like, interview. I even think this might have been, like, Teen Vogue or something uh, around Good Morning Revival. That was just Joel. And they just asked him a couple of questions. And one of the things they asked was, like, one thing he wanted to do musically that – they hadn't done and he said win a Grammy and they saw they've never even been nominated they would win a Grammy maybe writing for someone else I can see that maybe they're great writers yeah I don't know if they're writing for anybody now or if they have recently but I can see I mean they they have and they do but I don't know like I don't I'm not sure like what they would who they're writing for that might be like Grammy potential but I I would love to see an artist yeah yeah um, so there were some YouTube comments from an account called Good Charlotte Classics, which is a fan account, uh, that were very fun. <laughs> oh, have to check this out. Yeah. Bad 351 Bronco said, this whole album takes me back. Ah, it's 2002 again. It's some good stuff too. Who cares what anyone else thinks? Just listen to what you like. Agree. I mean, it's fun. You're having a bad yeah. day. You pop this in. You're going to be happy. Yeah. Perry Gore said, who could see through such blazed up bloodshot eyes less than three? I don't know. That's romantic, I guess. Blazed up bloodshot (laughs) eyes. Uh, You know, whatever. Um, Tenson95 said, I love this song. It's just awesome. The intro with bass reminds me of Sliver by Nirvana. And then X- Killa 21 X said, this is nothing like Sliver. What are you all on about? It doesn't say grandma take me home 55 times or whatever it is. Um, Christian Gonzalez said, this song is so underrated. And Mary Martell <laughs> said, no one makes fun of good Charlotte. Okay. If you do make fun of them, I'll want to know about it because I am a true GC fan and have been since 2007. Oh, we need to get her on the, you need to get her on the pod. Right. I bet she's got a lot to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, song meetings did not have the right lyrics for this song, but 
oh my gosh, I used to spend so many hours on that website. Right. Oh my, yes. I mean, I don't, about anything, right? Like that's yeah. like the first thing I remember doing on the internet is looking up lyrics to songs and printing them out. Like yeah. back when I was in eighth grade. So I guess it'd be like 97, 98. Um, but I would spend a lot of time on songmeetings.net. Oh yeah. Um, organized Confusion said, I love this song. It rocks my socks. It pissed me off when they didn't play it at Warp Core this year in NYC though. Nightmare XGZ said, I love this song. It brings back so many memories of when I was younger. And Joel wrote this for Benji. Oh, yeah. So that makes sense. Um, Lagwagon 182 said, the beginning riff is practically Sliver from Nirvana. <laughs> Ugh, good Charlotte. I used to be obsessed with them when I was 12. In retrospect, I'll never understand why. Um, so I want to talk about Sliver by Nirvana. I've never, I don't know it. So I was just listening to this before the song, because I was like, all right, before the episode. Recording. I mean, I might know it, but not realize I know it, but like, I'm not a big Nirvana fan. <laughs> I mean, listen, I so mean, you yeah. need to go listen to it <laughs> as soon as we finish. Um, the song itself, not a lot of similarities, but like the opening bass riff to Sliver sounds extremely like, let me go. Um, I would, I, I kind of think maybe Let Me Go, the bass riff was directly inspired by Sliver. And I say that because like little things, some of the like guitar chords or something were inspired by Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I know Benji has said like once that he really likes Nirvana and the Smells Like Teen Spirit video. So I would not be surprised if that was like a very intentional reference. Yeah, and I think what's wrong with that, right? Like that's right. what mu music's right. for, right? To inspire the next generation. I mean, there's exactly. tons of bands out now that sound like Good Charlotte, you know? Exactly. So, um, I think well, the that's whole like, I mean, MGK. Okay, so I was just texting someone about this, but like, um, actually, Ashley Rayburn. Hi, you're probably listening to this. Um, Ashley Rayburn was a previous guest on this show, and she's also a big MGK fan. And I was texting her because I was like, "Look, Ashley, there's a song called Bloody Valentine on MGK's mm -hmm. album. Uh, is it like a good Charlotte reference?" And she was like, "You know, he's never confirmed it, but like, we we're both kind of saying we think maybe it is because yeah, he's never confirmed it, but like, he's a big GC fan, and there's a lot of references to." other bands of the same era right like all time low know. i believe is named after a newfound glory a newfound glory lyric yeah so which i don't they're local they're from towson yes i i think it, i might have been a little older when they came out and it wasn't in the scene at that time i yeah. it's very possible i saw them um at some point and didn't realize it but yeah there's a lot of um there's somebody else i think that was named after like a newfound glory lyric i mean that's i'm sure it's, yeah it's very possible i think also mgk is like a big taking back sunday fan i think i want to read i want to say oh i would be more. surprised so um i think maybe maybe screamo is next to come back i don't know maybe yeah that too i'm here for all of it yeah um but yeah i'm sh i mean it's possible yeah well val i have a few questions to wrap this up Okay. Uh, how has Let Me Go held up for you over time? Well, I think for me, um, you know, I mentioned like the, uh, my dog's outside the door. Like, what are you doing in there? Um, <laughs> like, I think for me, the nostalgia aspect um, and going back into those simpler times is where Good Charlotte's like really stuck with me. So I'm 37 now, but a couple years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, abnormally wow. young at 32 years old um, with like no family history or anything like that. Wow. I had a two-year-old at home. Um, and that was like such a dark time in my life that I really leaned on like the music of like my childhood kind of to really kind of help sure. get me through it. I mean, like those reviews said, how can you not turn on that album and smile? Um, I went to a Newfound Glory show. 10 days after having a mastectomy. Like, oh my God. I was going. They played the Chameleon Club and they played, there was their 20 year anniversary tour and they played Nothing Gold Can Stay in entirety, which is what that's, I wanted to, that was like my dream. Um, and then self titled. So that was like the best wow. show of that whole tour, probably. Um, and I was there. I mean, I was like, hey, you're doing this. Um, so me and my best friend went up there. And I think that I leaned on like 
you, when you go through something like that and a diagnosis like that, you, and I'm in good health now and I'm considered cured, but amazing. Um, just know if you're young, it can still happen to you. Um, but I think that you look back on your whole life and what you've done. I mean, when you face your mortality like that, that's just something that God, yeah, anybody does. And so I just kind of went through like my whole life. I felt like in that year of like everything you've done and all the great experiences you've had. And I listened to a lot of Good Charlotte and Newfound Glory and um, maybe some brand new and Take Back Sunday. You know, it was a little darker, but like I went back to all, Nest, uh, Movie Life, like all of this music that brought me so much joy. Um, yeah. And they always say that you always go back to the music from your adolescence. Yes. Which yeah. I don't know if there's any research that I think there is. that like the There music, is. The music there that you liked around yeah. 21, I think, is what sticks with you the most. But that song really held up for me and just kind of those memories. And um, I think anytime anybody goes through like this tough time, they lean on nostalgia and like good times help get them through it. So I think that's... Wow, that was loud. I'm sorry. Um, so I think that was something that yeah has stuck with me um, through the years for sure. It's incredible, and I'm so glad you've had you know Good Charlotte and this song as a a resource. Yeah, I mean that's what music's for, right? It's just a kind of having a bad day, music. Having a great day, music. Um, and I really hope to instill that in my kids. There's no yeah. kids bop in this house. No, <laughs> um, you're listening to music. You're listening to what mom and dad like. So my son refers to less than Jake as daddy's music. Um, and good Charlotte is mommy's yeah, music. Yeah, because mommy or Newfound Glory is mommy's music. Honestly, also mainly Taylor Swift is also mommy's okay. music. We're, okay. we're big Swifties. I always told him when she comes back on tour again, I'll, I'll take you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, Val, what has good Charlotte meant to you over the years and how has that changed? So probably a lot of what I just said. I mean, I was a huge fan of theirs from probably like 99 to like 2002. I think right. once I went to college, I kind of, like I said, straight away and kind of got more into like the um, Take Back Sunday brand new. I was into Finch for a while, a lot of the drive through bands. Yeah. Um, and then um, kind of grew out of them, I felt like a little bit. I think the last time I saw them live was probably 2009. Wow. Okay. Um, so it's been a while. Um, and so I kind of forgot about them for a while, but then I think as I've had kids and like, the, you know, that first album, there's not really any cuss words or anything in it. Like that's something you can play for your kids. Oh, I mean, I there's a song called I, thank you, mom. Like it's, right. it's pretty oh, family yeah, friendly. I yeah. Play that more for them. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> thank your mom. Um, yeah. so yeah, I think that, and I think they wrote that for their mom because she had had some health issues as well. Yeah. Um, but I think that I, I, you know, I really forgot about them for a long time, but then over the past couple of years, as I get older and I have kids and I went through cancer, like I really, you know, have gone back to them now that sure. there's also Spotify um, and you're listening to these playlists and then like a song pops up and you're like, oh, like I totally forgot about them. Like, and then you go on this, I'm sure you do this all the time, Molly, but then you go on this deep dive of yep. like every album and then art, and then you just kind of go down the rabbit hole. Oh Yeah. I have a long commute, so I listen to a lot of music and okay. podcasts as well. <laughs> gotcha. Well, Val, any last words about Let Me Go, about Good Charlotte, or about yourself? No, I think that's it. I'm just, um, it was fun to talk to you and kind of talk. You know, it's very rare that I can talk to someone that had that passion that I do, uh, not oh, yeah. about just Good Charlotte, but music in general. Um, and it stuck with me as I've gotten older. So, you know, I think that this was really fun. It's fun to kind of Thank go back you so and much. listen, you know, revisit those days. And I'm definitely getting a cassette player to listen to these cassette tapes. Oh my God. You definitely should. <laughs> and I'll have to I want some old photos. I want to hear <laughs> some of these old songs. Wow. I'll just play it and then record it and send it over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Val, I like to do a Generation GC and Friends Spotify playlist. So we're going to include Let Me Go, which is a song we discussed today. And then I would love to have a recommendation from you of just anything you've been enjoying lately that's not good, Charlotte. Oh, let me look at my Spotify really quick. It's probably mostly like um, Coco Melon songs and <laughs> Hamilton and Vivo because that's kind of what, you know, my kids have been listened to all the time. Sure. I am a huge fan of Billie Eilish's new album. So I, I think she's such a talent. So I'm looking through my Spotify now. Um, I love her. Other than that, I haven't really gotten into any new 
pop punk music, but I just think that um, Happier Than Ever is just like a perfect song. Sure. We'll put that on there. Um, so yeah, put it on there. I love her. Um, I remember hearing her first album being like, this is definitely going to win the Grammy this year. Yeah. But yeah, if you have any recommendations for like, if you like Good Charlotte, you might like this. I'm here for it. Amazing. Well, you know what? Check out check out the Generation GC and Friends playlist. I'll send you the link to that because you're going to hear... I mean, some of it is pop punk, but some of it is just other stuff the uh, guests of the show have liked. So I'll, I'll send you the link to that so you can okay. jam out to that. Mm-hmm. Well, Val, I also like to ask my guests for a charity that they really believe in that we can encourage listeners to donate to. Um, and as a thank you, you know, I'll, if anyone makes a donation to this organization, I'll, I'll send out some stickers. So what's an organization that you would like people uh, listening to support? Um, so since I am a young breast cancer survivor, there is a charity called the Young Survival Coalition Okay, um, that helps support women under 40 that have had breast cancer um, because that's really a whole nother ball game when you're younger. Yeah. Um, I mean, they and don't also even, when you're, I, I they was going to say, they don't screening recommend that young. screening. Yeah. Like you, you don't know. get a, they don't recommend mammograms if you're 30 years old usually. No, nope, not even until you're 40. So, yeah. um, and I've known plenty of people get diagnosed young. Yeah. Um, and then it's kind of extra tough because you, um, with a breast cancer, it's often hormone fueled. So it's really risky for you to be pregnant again. So in Benji fashion, I have a son that I had and my second son was born with a surrogate, Wow. Um, which was, you know, such a journey as well. It's such a beautiful journey. So yeah. I, I, so my son was born in May, um, 2020 through a gestational carrier. And then I saw like in January that Benji and, and Cameron Diaz had a baby via surrogacy too. So that wow. was very cool to see. Um, I'm very happy for them. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a village to raise children and sometimes it takes a village to have them. Yeah. I, I definitely, I, you know, I, I know that, you know, healthcare providers, I, I just, I mean, I think it's so important to stay on top of things. And I know in the U S obviously insurance is tricky and stuff is expensive, but um, you know, I think it's important for everyone to be doing like breast self exams. Yeah. Regularly. Yeah. Be your own self advocate. I did a yeah. self exam and caught it very early. Did not need chemo. Thank God. Yeah. Um, wow. This seems fitting for the last day of breast cancer awareness month. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. Right? <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. This is so, we're yeah. recording this on Halloween, October 31st, by yes. the way. Um, so yeah, I think it's really, really important that a lot of young women twenties, they can be in their twenties or 30s, Oh my God. Yeah. No. Um, so, Hey, I say, if you've got breasts, you're at risk. So it doesn't matter if you have family history. I did not, I had, I do not have the breast cancer gene. Um, well, and it's, it's like, you can't always, you know, you don't always know if you have the gene, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, typically if you don't have a lot of family history that you probably don't, but yeah, you don't know. So that's another question to ask a provider is definitely, should I get a gene test? That's my uh, pulpit from maybe I'll save a life. I don't know. (laughs) I look, if, if this means like one person listening to this does an exam and goes to the doctor, I mean, that's, that's a difference. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Amazing. Val, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, where can listeners keep up with you, like on social media? Well, I have an Instagram feed. Um, it's Val Amy, which is my maiden name. It's V-A-L-A-M-E-Y. Um, I'm private, I think, but I'm happy to, you know, it's just me and my kids. So it's nothing really exciting. I have two boys. They're 18 months and six and they're insane. Um, I have a cute dog and my husband, but that's, that's pretty much it. It's just family shots. Amazing. But I'm also on Twitter with the same username. Um, I'm taking a, I was, after the election, I was taking a, a break from Twitter, kind sure, of all the under- politicalness. I just needed to do tops, but I occasionally will get on there, um, and share some news or like post some stuff. So that's, that's, that's where I am. Amazing. Val, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I, I so love hearing all of your stories and memories and, and hearing, you know, about some of these early shows. Listeners, thank you for tuning in. The last time we had a retrospective episode talking about Generation RX as a whole, going song by song through that album. On our next episode, we'll be talking about a song from the young and the hopeless. My name is Molly Huddleston. Once again, and as always, I'm your host, as well as the producer, creator, and editor of this podcast. Please make sure to follow Generation GC at Generation GC Pod, P-O-D, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please make sure to subscribe to the show on your preferred podcast provider. 
But most importantly, tell your friends. Word of mouth is a hugely important way for the Generation GC fam to grow. Thanks for tuning in.